we have a uh, double slot coming up now. Double header. We have uh, we've got uh, Roman Dolan from Nokia, and we've also got Ricardo Vassini from Lynx. There's going to be talking about container labs. So we've got Roman first, and who will do a handover to Ricardo in due course. There you go. Hi, and hi everybody. Thanks for having us here. My name is Roman. I'm part of the product management team at Nokia. And today we will talk about labs as code with container lab. We'll take an unusual spin. We'll talk about the user's perception of container lab, how we think users use container lab, how which features they leverage. And I think it's going to be quite interesting. So let's get into it. You know, fun fact about labs, everybody needs them, everybody wants them. If you are a solo network engineer, you probably want to have some labs so that you can build your muscle memory with BGP, or SPF, your classical routing protocols, network automation tools, monitoring, all that good stuff that we have to deal with. And you have to build your muscle memory, you have to build your experience. So that's where virtual labs come really handy. If you can spin up a topology whenever you are on the go at your home, in your dusty super micro servers that you uh, found in a closet, that's awesome. That gets you going and you can quickly uh, get 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 to you know to the practical exercises with the tools and technologies that we work on but now if you are operating the network you probably also want to have a virtual lab to be your digital twin of your production network so that you can catch bugs early before they hit your production routers pretty much like the security belt at the airport you want to intercept malicious payloads, malicious commits, malicious, malicious network touches before somebody really starts to hit your network. And lastly, if you have a network department or a combination between network department and software engineering team, you want to have a repository of labs that everybody can use. And if you can easily build this repository and share the labs between uh, the sub teams or departments, you can foster some really nice collaboration between the teams. So, okay, labs are cool. That, that fact we established. But now, why as code? What's wrong with the original approach? Why we want to get one more stuff to work on as network engineers? So, I would say that when we start to define labs as code, you get some benefits from the Git workflow. Pretty much as software engineers work with code daily, they know the benefits that they can get from the uh, usual Git workflows. And I would claim that the three benefits are most important to us. So first, we can foster quite some interesting collaboration angles when we start to define labs as code. That is what we do at Donkey when we build labs and we want to share them with our colleagues. We define them as code, we push them to GitLab or GitHub, and then we initiate a pull request where everybody can join and review the code. They can enhance the topology, they can suggest some changes to the uh, wiring of the topology or the configuration of the routers, and we find this collaboration really essential. You can also start versioning your labs. Say you want to create a digital twin of your network. You start small, you create your initial skeleton of the lab, you version it version one, and then as you build gradually your topology, you introduce new protocols, you introduce services, customer connections, and so on and so forth, you can version control your changes. Because every, every commit that you make is neatly stored in Git repository, you have a clean way to go from one version to another and see how your lab evolves. You can also, of course, share labs, and that's what I love because I work mostly with the communities. Whenever we build something, we push it on GitHub, and then the whole world can see what we build, and they can contribute, they can benefit from what we've built, and maybe enhance our labs that we publish on GitHub. And you can do so as well if you are a partner or a seller, or you, have to, or you just want to share it internally within the teams. At the same time, we're not really reinventing the wheel by saying labs as code is, is cool. We're actually following the footsteps of giants because you probably heard of the term infrastructure as code. That's how lots of people deploy services or infrastructure nowadays. You define your topology or your services in a set of DSL, domain-specific languages, or YAML files, and then some tools take the files, parse them on, and create the infrastructure or services in a public or private cloud. So what we do with the tool called Container Lab is basically taking the same approach, but landing it on the network problem space. Container Lab takes the definition of your lab, 
neatly stored in a YAML file and deploys it on the infrastructure that you own. So the good thing is that I've been here. At Lynx 117, I presented the container lab, so I talked about how you define labs, how you create nodes, how you wire them together with Lynx, so I will definitely not repeat it here. What I will do instead is I will show you what you can build with container lab, how the real lab looks like instead of just you know, a simple example of two nodes connected back to back together. And this is the lab that I wanted to quickly show you here. It's a quite fancy lab. It's a streaming telemetry lab with a clock topology, three clients, fully work functional telemetry stack with telemetry collector, TSDB, and visualization layer powered by Grafana. And this QR code will get you to the GitHub repository where this code is stored. But I wanted to show you the workflow that Contain Lab offers. It's quite different to probably what you used to do uh, when you deploy your labs with even Geo Genius 3. As I said, it's all in code. So how do you deal with code if you want to download some open source projects? You go to GitHub, right? And you do the same with Container Lab. You go to the GitHub, you copy the URL of the Git repository, and then you go back to your terminal where Container Lab is installed, and you say Git clone, and you paste the URL that you just copied from the repository. That's step number one. That's how you get the lab as code artifact. Now, once it's there, and I know it's a bit tiny for this big crowd, but essentially this is the lab as code. This is how you define your links, your clients, your telemetry stack, configuration of the nodes, of the cloud topology that we use in this lab. There is a lot of stuff here, but it's all readable. It's all in source code. You don't have to be you know, a Python developer or C++ developer. It's just a YAML file that natively captures the intent of your lab. And then you go back to your terminal. We all love terminals, right? You say container lab deploy, and you point it to the file that sits inside this repository. And then container lab will start spooling container images that represent your nodes, start to wire them up with links, basically building the topology that you declaratively defined in your YAML file. And as you can see, it will pull the images that are available publicly. If your image is private, it will try to pull it from the private repository if you have one. And lastly, it will start to plug and play with uh, links as you define them. Essentially, a couple of minutes later, this lab will be able uh, will be will be deployed, and you will see um, a nice table showing how many nodes it was deployed, how to connect to them, because you will have management IP addresses assigned by Docker, and then you will be able to connect to your routers. You will be able to open Grafana UI, see the dashboard that's there, run traffic scripts to simulate the payload and see the graphs building up. So yeah, if you are into streaming telemetry and want to know more, you will be able to, look, to run it on any Linux machine that you have. This lab, fully open source, we do not use any proprietary images, so you can recreate it on your own. All right, sweet. Now, I promised that we will talk about the use cases that we captured from our users, how users use Container Lab. And I captured four user groups here. So first, you are a solo network engineer. Maybe it's somebody from your networking team. Maybe it's somebody who just starts his way in, in networking or her way in networking. How do you leverage Container Lab? Well, it's an open source, lightweight, and free software project. So you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to have a specific service with a subscription, nothing like that. You download it. You install it on any Linux machine, and it just works. So you can build your portfolio, you can build your muscle memory skills with all the technologies that you want to master, and you can easily integrate your labs with multiple containers that are available to us. Like the lab that I showed with streaming telemetry, you can pull in open BGPD, route servers, flow collectors, what name you, right? So you can definitely leverage all the container ecosystem that we accumulated as a community. And it's also infrastructure agnostic, so you can run it on any Linux server that runs Docker and, uh, and, and, and a Linux distribution that is quite modern. So what happens when you are a value-added reseller or a partner or a vendor? Then you use Container Lab a little bit differently. You appreciate it, it, it being a ubiquitous tool to run labs. Like what we do as a vendor when we go to a customer, we ship them a URL to a Git repository and we say, do you have a server? Do you have x86? Well, yes, we do. So you can run our lab and the lab will capture the exact flow of the lab as we, as lab designers prescribed. So for them, it's really easy to see how we, how we build some 
technologies or solutions because they can run and have the same experience as we coded in a lab. And of course, you can also build the centralized repository of your labs. Maybe you want to build some labs for one vendor as a reseller for another one, and then you can you know, uh, review these labs because they are basically Git repositories. If you have a network engineering team, and most of you probably have, uh, when I was part of the network engineering team, I wanted to really collaborate on something. So if somebody builds a lab, I wanted to review it, I wanted to enhance it, or instead I wanted to get some inspiration from labs that somebody built. And that is what we do in my team. When somebody builds a lab, we have a joint review, we see how a person approaches a certain problem, and then we introduce like different subject matter experts to provide their opinion. So this collaborative angle or effect is really substantial, and I really like how Container Lab enables or fosters that. Also, because it's resource-friendly and infrastructure agnostic tool, when we go to a software engineering team and we say, hey, take this lab, they don't have issues running them because they have Linux servers as well. So that's, again, one of the nice benefits that Container Lab offers for engineering teams. And the fourth group, which is quite interesting, is software engineering teams. Well, we as vendors, we have a lot of software engineers, right, working on different parts of the systems. They don't necessarily want to deal with routing stuff if they work on the higher level, uh, like network management system or something, not really touching the networking. So for them, it would be really nice to have a tool that spins up a lab with network underlay so that they can develop their stuff just consuming the networking part. They don't want to know how to configure BGP or anything like that. So for them, if they can type container lab deploy and have a bunch of networking elements deployed immediately, that's a lifesaver. They can invest in uh, developing tools rather than caring about how to get this networking part done. So to be honest, at Lynx 117, we couldn't even dreamt of numbers like that. We really see that Container Lab is taken off with more than 100 installations, 80 contributors, both from vendors, partners, consumers, and customers. We have 22 supported network operating systems. So we grew from being maybe like five major network operating systems to 20 something. That, that's, that's really great and amazing. And I think people start to appreciate Container Lab more as container or as infrastructure as code tools becoming more kind of our game, our, I mean, network engineers game. So I think in future, we will have these numbers even more, maybe at links 122, <laughs> if we show up. These numbers must be doubled. But anyway, I think if you find Container Lab helpful, interesting, inspiring, you can go and type in your browsers containerlab.dev, and you will see our documentation portal, which answers all the questions that you might have about Container Lab. And yeah, lastly, I wanted to introduce Ricardo, who will talk about how they use Container Lab and some other nice tools in automated user acceptance testing in the links. Thank you.